Hi there, witchy friends. It's time for a Tamed Wild unboxing video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Melissa and I do witchy stuff like this subscription unboxing and tarot readings. And every Monday I put out another video called Metaphysical Monday, where we talk about a metaphysical topic. Um, a lot of them come from some from suggestions by you guys. So uh, check out the videos if you're interested and leave comments with suggestions. So let's get into Tamed Wild, okay? Um, so Tamed Wild, if you're in the broom closet still, it comes in a plain white bag. I'm gonna cover my address with just a regular little thing there and it just says Tamed Wild. So, I mean, that could really be any type of business. So you're good if you're still trying to kind of not be so open. I already cut it because it's easier that way. All right, so once we take that bag off, beautiful box. All right. I cannot remember what the theme is supposed to be. So let's just dig in. All right. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. The last couple boxes have been really, uh, like it's not taped or anything. Oh, but like, I don't know if it's cause it's full, but like these little things are sticking in really hard. All right. They're coming along. All righty. Ooh, wild medicine. That is our theme. And that's what we look like. Something smells good. Okay, so this is our little booklet. They usually come with these, a little booklet about wild medicine. So I'm imagining that this is going to be herb and, and properties and stuff. Uh, I opened to Blue Lotus, botanical name, nymph nymph Nymphaca. Yeah, it's in like a, a cursive font and it's very small. <laughs> okay, so uh, description, Blue Lotus is a beautiful tropical water lily that has blue star shaped flowers. Historical uses, um, used in Egyptian rituals and shamanic, shamanistic traditions all the way back to the 14th century. Uh, healing histories say that Blue Lotus is also a serene deep sleep aid and can be used in dream work. Interesting, because Monday's Metaphysical Monday video is about crystals for dreaming and or sleep slash insomnia, that type of stuff. So if that's your thing, make sure you hit subscribe because um, Monday's video is all about that. All right, magical uses, work with Blue Lotus during dream divination and lucid dreaming work. Lore, Blue Lotus is mentioned in the Book of the Dead. Often associated with death, rebirth, and creation, Blue Lotus was used by, an, by the ancient Egyptians during rituals in which they were steeped in wine and then shared collectively. So a little bit about that, but that is, um, it's a lot of words. It's very good descriptions. Um, there are some illustrations of some of the herbs or plants or there's cherry, chickweed, cedar, linden, mangosteen, like all kinds of stuff. And some, I really like the, um, like vintage look to the illustrations. But yeah, there's there's a pretty good amount of, her of herbs there. All right, so I'm not gonna read this, but I'm gonna flash it real quick, little card saying what's in there. Um, and this one says Persephone's Torch. So we'll see what that's about. That may be like our ritual that's in here, um, but I'm not gonna read too deeply until the end. At the end, we'll go through and read those together. All right, we have our, our little Tamed Wild pouch. Oh, I think it's an amulet. I'm not wearing my bracelet. I'm not wearing any jewelry. I should have put some jewelry on. Ooh, okay, so the, so Perse Persephone's torch, this must be a charm for Persephone. Um, and they're doing an amulet series uh, at the beginning of the year, January, maybe December, January. Um, we got um, a bracelet. Uh, and we're filling it with charms throughout the year. So approximately every other box is getting a charm. You can buy them all separately on their website, but this one's a moon. Oh, the back of it also, like, it's like, mm, there might be more information about it. Oh, my new phone focus is so much better. I'm, I'm so happy. Okay. <laughs> so it kind of looks like a moon on the back too, but then like there's a crescent. And so we'll see if there's any more information on that, but I, I love the charms. Okay, and then we have some incense cones, which it probably says what they are. Um, I can't tell what flower that is. It kind of looks like an iris. That might be an iris. Let me, let me take a sniff for you. Oh, that smells good. It's kind of like a sweet floral. 
it doesn't smell like any incense I've ever used before, so there's probably information on the card that I won't read yet. All right, and then we have our Mabon uh, tea. And I will show you what the tea itself looks like. Oh, I'm so excited, my new phone. Oh my goodness. All right, contains black tea, orange peel, cinnamon, and natural fruit flavoring. And all at once, summer collapsed into fall. Oscar Wilde quote. Um, so black tea is known for its antioxidant property, while orange is said to aid in migraines and head pain. For the mystics, this blend honors the turn of the wheel and the second harvest in the season of three. So um, there you go. It's uh, pretty full in there too. There's probably usually, because they're really tiny packages, but usually you can get probably, depending on how strong you drink your teas, um, they're... I want to say maybe three to four servings in each one. So not too bad. Oh, okay. I do remember seeing this. It's a little spell spoon with a leaf handle. Okay. Like not spell, spell spoon. Like, you know, for, you can use it for your teas. You can use it for adding things to spell jars. You can enchant. I have, um, I have a spoon, a specific, I'm going to tell you story time. Um, I have a, uh, like it's a teaspoon, like they're the longer ones for like stirring iced tea, um, which I don't need because I don't add anything to my iced tea because I don't like sweet tea. Sorry, don't, don't cancel me. I don't like sweet tea. Um, I do like lemon in my tea, so I, I guess I could use it for that. Anyways, um, I have a specific spoon that I use for my coffee. It's, um, it's the, if you, you see them like on Amazon where they're like iridescent or whatever, like the, the rainbow metallic ones. Um, so it stands out amongst all of my other cutlery. So um, every morning I charge my spoon before I stir my coffee and I say a little something um, depending on how I want my day to go. Um, and obvious, maybe not obvious to everyone, but which tip if you don't know, um, going, stirring your coffee clockwise brings things in, stirring counterclockwise or anti-clockwise um, will get rid of things. So if your intention for the day is to, um, you know, ward off negative people or vibes from negative people, um, then you would do counterclockwise. And I, I do it three times and I say whatever I feel like at that moment I'm going to need for the day, trusting your intuition. But anyways, so um, I love this cute little spoon. And the detail on the leaf is really, really cool. Oh, but you can see all the details on my nails don't look. <laughs> but um, I love that um, for, you know, spell jars and such. Alrighty. Last item. Hmm. Okay. Usually I feel like there's more in the box, but our last item. So we usually get some kind of decor or cloth item. Past boxes, I've received altar cloth. I've received um, like a tote bag. Um, like you can go back and watch all of the unboxing videos. There's playlists. If you go to the channel and look at my playlist, there's unboxing videos are all in one playlist. I try to keep it organized so it's easy for you guys to find stuff. But there's usually some kind of either like textile item or decor item. We did have like a wall hanging that had like the moon. I think show me. This is from a past box. It's still sitting here because I haven't found a place to put it. Um, but yeah, so there's always something like that. Um, this is an apron. Okay, so it's like a waist apron. It's like a waist apron, so it's not gonna cover all of that, but gives you some pockets. It's pretty heavy fabric. I wouldn't say it's canvas, but it's kind of thick like canvas, but it feels a little bit, um, a little bit more, uh, what's the word? Like kind of, not like silky, but like it's smoother than canvas. Oh, it might say on the tag. No, it doesn't. Um, water temp, do not bleach, cool iron, do not dry clean, do not tumble dry. Um, so yeah, basically hand wash this one. Um, but if you're using it for gardening or whatever, like for garden tools, if you're um, going to be doing some kind of ritual and you need to have, you know, like scissors and other things handy or you're moving about while you're doing any type of 
workings. Um, I feel like that would come in handy, um, but you could just use it for gardening. There's, since it's about wild herbs and what is it called? Wild medicine. Um, if you could, like if you're a forager, if you like to go foraging, I actually have, if you like to forage for mushrooms, I, I made a book for that. Um, ask me about it and I'll, I'll send you a link if you're interested. But um, if you like go foraging and you need a place to hold stuff, if you have chickens, um, I'm sure you probably have one of those cute little egg pouch things, but hey, you know, so many uses for this and it's so cute. Um, and it's, it's soft, it's thick, it's heavy duty. Um, it looks like it's very well put together. Um, but yeah, don't wash it. Don't dry it. <laughs> Hand wash. Um, but yeah, that's really pretty, really cute. Um, pretty long apron strings. Um, I'm going to try, I might stand up. I'm a medium heavy. <laughs> I'm not petite, only in height. I am only petite in height. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, there's too much craft around here. But yeah, so it goes around me with my big waist and my big butt and it still has plenty of string. So I could, could I? Everybody gets to see my whole form. Yeah, like I could wrap it around. So even if you're a bigger gal, it'll fit, I think, you know. So not so, um, I don't know, what's like the opposite of inclusive is exclusive, which doesn't sound right grammatically um but yeah so they're a little inclusive on the size generous with the apron string all right that was all that's in the box so let's take a look at the card make sure nothing's missing ritual tools wild medicine booklet check half apron check leaf spoon check persephone amulet check uh cone incense check maybon tea check okay so everything was in the box good um so a hundred the booklet Learn about 100 magical and medicinal plants in our wild medicine booklet. So there's 100 in there, um, along with a little bit of uh, lore. Do, 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 do. So for this ritual, we'll create an ancestral offering in the form of a tea blend. I feel like I missed something. I'll just start over. Learn about 100 magical medicinal plants in our wild medicine booklet. With this, Within this book, we've included the historical uses of each herb, forgotten plant lore, and suggestions for incorporating flowers, spices, and flora of all kinds into ritual and spell work. For this ritual, we will create an ancestral offering in the form of a tea blend, a sim simple snack or favorite meal. Use this booklet as a guide when choosing ingredients for the recipe. To learn more about a specific herb, visit magic, with a K, and alchemy.com and click on the tab labeled Herbal Alchemy. So I will put that in the description so that you have the proper spelling for it if you're not familiar with the site because I'm not, never heard of it. So that will be cool to check out. Um, the Half Apron, uh, many things make us feel magical from the tools we use to the books we read. Even the people in our inner circle can affect our energy. Ceremon ceremonial clothes are another element that can influence how we perceive ourselves during ritual and spell work like a superhero applying a mask or a magician donning a cape. When we wear this apron, we invoke our inner alchemist, plant mag, 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 magus, mag, yeah, that, that word, and kitchen witch. <laughs> All right, so the leaf spoon, perfect for stirring tea or scooping herbs from jars. Incorporate this delicate spoon into your home apothecary or kitchen altar as you see fit. Persephone amulet, Persephone, is the springtime maiden, the queen of the underworld, and keeper, also the initiator, in parentheses, of mysteries. When she stands alongside her mother Demeter, they represent the ebb and flow of seasonal vegetation as well as the light and dark phases of the moon. As a dark goddess, Persephone appeals to the living through her connections to the dead. Uh, she serves the shadow worlds by guiding lost spirits and meditate, mediating between realms. For this ritual, we will use this amulet to invoke Persephone. With the dark goddess by our side, we will extend an invitation to an ancestor or spirit with whom we wish to speak. May her torch lead them back to the realm of the living and shine a light on the messages we receive. After this ritual, you may add this amulet to a bracelet or chain 
To do this, find a pair of pliers, open the jump ring on the top of the charm, um, open the ring just enough so that you can slide it. It, it kind of explains how to add it. Um, the Persephone amulet is the fifth charm in our 2021 amulet series. There will be a total of six charms that subscribers can collect in preparation for an end of the year intention setting ceremony. You do not need to acquire the entire collection, but as new amulets become available, you can find them on our website, tamedwild.com. Cone incense. Place the cone incense in a burn safe bowl and let it smolder as you craft your ancestral offering. You can use the incense to represent the elements of air on your altar, a pentagram, or in your home. Maybon tea, um, uplifting blend of black tea cinnamon. We already went through that. Um, brew two cups to close out today's ritual. To show gratitude to Persephone for her service, dedicate the first cup to her. Drinking, drink the second cup to ground yourself and recenter your energy. All right, so Persephone's torch. So if you don't want to listen to me read it, um, I will do this so that you may. I don't know if it's going to be backwards, so it's a new phone. I don't know if it's going to flip this or not once it's done recording. Um, if you wanted to screenshot, that's the front. And that's the back. Hopefully it flips it back around when we uh, publish it. All right. So if not, you can always just screenshot and then use your photo editor. I'm sure you know how to work your stuff. All right. The Persephone's torch. When harvest season arrives, Greek goddess Persephone begins her annual descent into the underworld. No longer a springtime goddess, Persephone trades her flower crown for a magical torch, one that can never be distinguished. She uses its light to navigate the realm of darkness and call the dead. Although this goddess serves her devotees in many ways, she is, compa she is a compassionate guide. Not only does she escort deceased souls to their next home, but she also acts as a mediator between realms. Today, we invoke Persephone to help us deliver an ancestral offering. In place of an ancestor, we can ask Persephone to summon a younger version of ourselves, a deity, dream guide, or a late mentor, friend, lover, animal companion that's left a lasting imprint on our soul. So we're asking her to um, guide somebody or a being that has been in our life that is crossed over um, to bring them forward. Uh, begin by purifying the kitchen, donning your apron, and setting up a temporary kitchen altar. The altar's location isn't important, so long as it doesn't interrupt the flow of the kitchen. In the center of the altar, envision a glowing pentagram laid out in front of you. Imagine there are about 12 inches of rainbow-colored light running between the points of a five-pointed star. If you're a visual person or if you aren't, well, if you're a visual person or are struggling to envision the pentagram, make physical lines with salt, cinnamon, dried rose petals, mud, mustard seed, or another ingredient that contributes to the essence of your offering. So you could probably use this booklet that they sent to find other items that might work for you to create a pentagram yourself. All right. The pentagram's points represent the elements air to the right, water to the left, earth to the bottom left, fire to the bottom right, and spirit at the top. Gather items to represent each of the five elements. If you need suggestions, consider using a candle for fire, incense for air, a shell or chalice for water, and a stone for earth. For the point representing spirit, use a photograph or another representation of the person receiving the offering. So whoever you're um, calling in. If you have an object previously owned by them or something written by their hand, include these items next to the photo. Lastly, write the full name of whom you wish to speak on a piece of parchment. Include any messages and questions that you have for them. Place the parchment in the center of the pentagram and rest the Persephone amulet on top. Stand in front of your altar. Light the incense and the candle. Hold your hands over the center of the pentagram and envision Persephone standing next to you. Visualize what she is wearing and the color of her hair since her torch is heat. And here, oh, it got warm. Um, 
visualize what she's wearing and the color of her hair. Sense her torch's heat and hear, every time I say torch's heat, my hand warms up. Um, and hear the embers crackle. When she places her hands over yours, the torch creates a protective bubble of light surrounding both of you. Rub your hands together for about 20 seconds as if you're trying to warm them. And then with the pointer and middle finger on your dominant hand, trace the outline of the pentagram starting at the top the point re representing spirit and draw a line down to the bottom left to the point representing earth. This direction is intentional. Draw, uh, drawing a line from spirit to earth mimics the divine energy we're inviting into the physical realm. Next, move from the point of earth to air, air to water, water to fire, and fire back to spirit. Repeat this process several times. Imagine your hand as an extension of Persephone's torch. As you trace the pentagram, pay attention to your breath, your posture, and any sensations or thoughts that arise. Envision a shaft of light beaming down from the heavens. It enters the torch, permeates the pentagram, and seeps out from beneath your altar. Beneath the pentagram, a glowing web of roots appears. As the roots inch deeper into the earth, they create a temporary knotting link, not linking the physical world to the spirit realm. Congratulations, you've successfully created a portal. Ask Persephone to maintain the portal, portal while you step away to craft your ancestral offering. Now would be a good time to speak aloud to your ancestor or whomever or whatever you are trying to reach. Um, ask questions, share stories, and explain what you hope to gain through this relationship. Don't forget to ask if there's anything you can do for them. Do they have any requests? When the food offering is ready, place it toward the top of the pentagram next to the photograph. Sit or stand in front of the portal for as long as you'd like to remain like it to remain open. When you're ready to say goodbye, thank your visitor, bid them farewell, and ignite the parchment beneath the Persephone amulet. Let it smolder to ash in a burning plate while you brew two cups of Mabon tea. Offer the first cup to Persephone and ask that she remove her torch and close the portal. Drink the second cup as you reflect on today's ritual. Record any questions, messages, or revelations in your journal, grimoire, book of shadows, what have you. Um, and so that's it on the, it doesn't specify what kind of food, um, you know, you, that is up to your intuition. You could pick something that um, is relevant to the person, deity, entity, pet, whatever, um, something that they would like. Obviously that's what an offering would be. Um, I personally don't do deity work yet. I, I, I'm I'm still researching. Um, I consider myself more of a chaos witch. Um, so obviously I'm going to be re researching. I mean, maybe not obviously, but I'm going to be researching a lot before I do it. Um, so yeah, there's that. So if you have any questions or any, like you need clarification on what some of the items were, let's recap really quick. We have our apron with long enough ties to go around a, um, thicker waist, our very pretty, uh, leaf spoon, our Mabon tea, our incense cones, which we never did figure out what scent they were, but they smell amazing. It's not vanilla. Those look, that, that's that. what do you think that flower is? Is that an iris? It kind of looks like an iris. Our Persephone amulet that came in our cute little bag and our book wild medicine so that's what we have here if you're interested um, I'll pop a link to tamed wild is just tamed wild.com I don't have an affiliate link I buy these boxes I pay for them I don't get anything for telling you about them I just think they're awesome and share them um, so I'll put tamed wild.com in there and also the magical alchemy that was on the card I'll put a link down there so that you have the proper spelling um and uh yeah so if this is your thing if you like tarot readings metaphysical topics um next Monday we are talking about dream work and crystals crystals that you can use for dreams sleep slash insomnia um so yeah I will love to see you make sure you hit subscribe if that's your thing I will see you in the next video and always remember that the magic you seek is within you